Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Jen's Books. How are you doing? Um, I'm afraid I have to admit this is another haul video. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I wish I could blame anybody but myself for my obsession with uh, getting hold of books. On the upside, some of them are library books, some of them are secondhand books, and then there are a few that I've sort of treated myself to a little bit as well so this is my book haul um for july to share with you as usual it'd be really lovely to know if you've read any of these books what your thoughts were whether there are any that you'd recommend off the back of it or or whether you didn't enjoy them it would be really really good to know so please put your comments um below the video it'd be great to hear from you so first of all i thought i'd start with um a, a couple of library books that i picked up but i also picked up quite a few um for my research as well but i won't bore you with those ones um i'll stick to the the exciting stuff so the first one is one that one of my subscribers recommended a while ago and i've just managed to pick up a copy in the library and it's percival everett's the trees which you may be familiar with so this uh the blurb says the trees is a page turn that opens with a series of brutal murders in the rural town of money mississippi when a pair of detectives from the mississippi bureau of investigation arrive they meet expected resistance from the local sheriff his deputy the coroner and a string of racist white townsfolk the murders represent a puzzle for at each crime scene there is a second dead body that of a man who resembles Emmett Till a young black boy lynched in the same town 65 years before the detectives suspect that these killings um, are retribution but soon discover that eerily similar murders are taking place all over the country something truly strange is afoot as the bodies pile up the MBI detectives seek answers from a local root doctor who has been documenting every lynching in the country for years and covering a history that refuses to be buried so um this is the trees it sounds really interesting um, it sounds like it's going to be quite gripping, a bit of a, a thriller, um, but also quite literary. But I don't know a huge amount about it, actually. It's one that was um, sort of shortlisted for an award a while ago, and I, I didn't pick it up. I think it was the booker. So I'm looking forward to reading that. As I say, it was um, recommended to me, so I'm, I'll definitely be reading that. The next one I picked up is The White Hair by Jane Johnson. Um, and this is one that I picked up a couple of times and wasn't sure whether I wanted to read it or not um, it does sound like it was something that I'll probably really enjoy um, but I finally picked it up in the library the other day love libraries they're amazing so this one says the house at White Cove comes with a reputation once the venue for glittering parties it's lain neglected since the war which is why Amelia and her mother Magda acquire it so cheaply in the summer of 1954. While Magda resolves to restore the house to its former glory, Mila just wants a happy home for a little girl, Janie. Locals say the valley is home to a white hair. To some, it's an ill omen, to others, a blessing. Feeling fragile and broken hearted, Mila is in need of as many blessings as she can get. But can this place provide the fresh start she so desperately needs? So there's something about it that feels kind of potentially gothic, which is why I picked up, but it might not be at all. I think probably the fact it's sort of it's historical as well. It's 1954 and um, sounds intriguing. So, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to reading that. But again, I don't really know much about it. So if you've read it before, please tell me what you thought. Um, the next is a few oh no actually this one was even better Lancashire Stories I got this for free the library was giving these away how amazing is that um this is a collection of short stories about um Lancashire and I'm assuming it was um yeah it's supported by the Arts Council England so I'm assuming yeah it was it was um a collaboration between the library services of Lancashire Blackpool and Blackburn with Darwin and for my research I'm one of the areas I'm thinking about is how the North is represented um, in literature and the media. So this was really amazing. This is like a fantastic gift. So I'm looking forward to, to reading it. But it says, when the people of Earth inevitably emigrate to Mars, what will happen to traditions like the Preston Guild? Are there secret coves underneath Blackpool seafront buildings? What was life like for Pakistani immigrants moving to Lancashire in the 1960s? 
how would people react if ghosts were walking the streets of Lancaster? Lancashire Stories answers these questions and so many more in this celebration of folk tales, mythology, heritage, people and places that make up the Red Rose County. So um, this is really exciting for me because it, 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 you know, not only is it a collection of short stories, it'll be fantastic, but it's about Lancashire. So looking forward to reading that and free, free. I don't even have to give it back. How amazing is that? And I really, really love the sort of images on the front. These, these etchings or woodcuts are just fantastic. So I'm looking forward to, to reading that can't miss that one out um the next are some secondhand books that i got hold of but some of them are, are actually quite new releases um the first is roof wear zero days i've read everything that roof wears written and usually um you know they're guaranteed to be quite gripping and lots of twists and turns and a, a bit of a page turner so um i had to pick this one up as i say because i've read all of the others i particularly enjoyed one by one which was the one based um, on a ski resort, I think, if I remember rightly. So, of course, cold, isolated locations right on my street. Um, but the information on this one says, um, hired by companies to break into buildings and hack security systems, Jack and her husband, Gabe, are the best penetration specialists in the business. But after a routine assignment goes horribly wrong, Jack arrives home to find her husband dead. To add to her horror, the police are closing in on her, their only suspect, suspect her. On the run and out of options jack must decide who she can trust as she circles closer to this truth in this unputdownable and heart pounding mystery so yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward to that i mean i've i've loved more some of her books more than others but i've enjoyed them all so um i had to pick that one up and i've managed to pick it up second hand unfortunately the postman left it in the rain so it's a little bit warped but it's definitely readable um the next one is alice thompson um uh I can never remember how this is pronounced. I know it's not China. I um, can't remember off the top of my head, but you know what I mean. Um, I've read quite a few of Alice Thompson's books before. I really, really enjoyed them. Um, I read Burnt Island and The Book Collector, um, that, which were both fabulous. Um, the Book Collector was one that was recommended by Jen Campbell and she's usually not far gone. It's quite gothic. There are certain, certainly sort of echoes of Angela Carter here in, in sort of the tone of the writing and the use of magic realism. So looking forward to reading this, particularly after reading her, her previous two works. Um, but this one is completely different. It's completely different. It's not a genre that I would usually so um, it'll be interesting to see how it all pans out. Um, Alice Thompson's gripping deep space novel sees a scientist and dream investigator Artemis travelling to the distant moon of Wanarus. Her ship has been sent to look for organism, organisms that will help assuage Earth's global warming, but it becomes clear on the journey that there are other disturbing reasons for the mission. Accompanied by Dryads, sophisticated AIs with synthetic bodies. Nothing is quite as it seems, even desire. This is a story of transfiguration, dreams and identity. Are we just a template of memories and experiences or is there something that makes us uniquely human? So I'm looking forward to reading that one by Alice Thompson. Um, as I say, really, really enjoyed the other novels that I've read that she's written. So looking forward to reading that. Then I've got some. 40 Tales from the Afterlives by David Eagleman. And I think this was another one um, that was rec recommended by Jane Campbell as well. So looking forward to getting stuck in to this. Um, it says, what happens to us when we die and what does that tell us about being human? In the afterlife, you may find that God is the size of a microbe and unaware of your existence. Or you may find the afterlife contains only those people whom you remember. In some afterlives, you are split into all your different ages. In some, you are recreated based on your credit card records. And in others, you are forced to live with annoying versions of yourself that represent what you could have been. In these wonderfully imagined tales, at once funny, wistful and unsettling, Eagle Man kicks over the chessboard of traditional notions and offers us a dazzling lens through which to see ourselves here and now. His stories are rooted in science and romance and awe at our mysterious existence, a mixture of hope, love and death that cuts through human nature at innovative innovative angles and I couldn't resist that I just thought it sounded really fantastic so um I think it's a collection of short stories but all sort of 
uh, exploring different ideas of the afterlife and you know quite dark straight up my street so looking forward to reading that also you know quick little read so that's definitely one that I'm looking forward to reading. I recently reviewed and read The Memory of Animals by uh, Claire Fuller and you may remember I absolutely loved it and it was my book of the month for, for May. So after reading that I decided to pick up another one of her books. She's written quite a few, she's got quite a back catalogue and this is Swimming Lessons by Claire Fuller and uh, this is another one of my second-hand books. You can tell by the sort of glossy post-library uh, covers that they have. So the wording says, Jim Coleman looked down from the window and saw his dead wife standing on the pavement below. Ingrid writes letters to her husband, Jill, about their life together, but instead of giving them to him, oh, sorry, I think it's Gil, um, but instead of giving them to him, as she hides each in the thousands of books Gil has collected, despite their two daughters, despite their beautiful but dilapidated house by the sea, despite Gil's talent as a writer, their marriage has been troubled. When Ingrid has written her final letter, she disappears from a Dorset beach. Twelve years later, her adult daughter Flora comes home to look after her injured father. Secretly, Flora has never believed that her mother is dead and she starts asking questions without realising um, that the answers she's looking for are hidden in the books that surround her. So it's about writers, it's about books, it's about letters, it's about loss, and it's by Claire Fuller. So really, really looking forward to reading that. I love The Memory of Animals. It was just an amazing book. So um, this is one that I picked out for shortlist. And it's quite a beautiful cover as well, sort of gold, um, shiny, shiny things, shiny cover. So looking forward to reading that. Um, I then also picked up one that I've been wanting to read for a while um, and it's Amal El Motar, This Is How You Lose the Time War and this is a book that's sort of been all over the place a bit and again not one that I would necessarily pick up because of the genre however a nice small read um, sounds quite interesting and I've heard nothing but good things about it so thought that I would give it a go. So the blurb on this one says, among the ashes of a dying world, an agent of the commandant finds a letter. It reads, burn before reading. Red and blue, two rival agents, hell-bent on securing the best possible future for their warring factions, strike up an unlikely correspondence. But what started as a taunt, a battlefield boast, grows into something more, something epic and romantic something that could change the past and the future. The discovery of their bond will mean their deaths. There's still a war going on and someone has to win that war. That's how wars work, right? Just sounds really interesting. Um, it doesn't really give a whole lot away really in, in that in terms of um, what the setting or the, or the mood of the piece is going to be. So um, I'm looking forward to reading this one and it's one that I'm going to pass on to my other half as well once I've, once I've read it. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that one nice little quick read. So looking forward to finally catching up and finding out what the uh, the deal is with that particular book. The last one I picked up secondhand is Maggie O'Farrell Instructions for a Heat Wave. Um, I love Hamnet. Um, I love to portrait of a, a duchess. Um, I'm not even sure if that's the actual correct title, um, but the last book that she bought out, but I really really enjoyed reading it. The Marriage Portrait, that's it. Just making up the title, The Marriage Portrait by um, Maggie O'Farrell. So I thought I'd delve into her um, back catalogue and I picked up instructions for a heat wave. Um, and it says, strange weather brings out strange behaviour. It's July 1976 and London is in the grip of a heat wave. It hasn't rained for months. The gardens are filled with aphids. Water comes from a standpipe and Robert Warden tells his wife Greta that he's going around the corners to buy a newspaper. He hasn't come back. The search for Robert brings Greta's children, two estranged sisters and a brother on the brink of divorce, back home, each with different ideas as to where their father may have gone. None of them suspects that their mother might have an explanation that even now she cannot share. So um, really looking forward to reading that. It sounds as though it's going to have a really uh, interesting um, atmosphere with the heat of that year. I've heard a lot about it it's before uh, my days, but um, I'm, I'm looking forward to reading that and finding out about the mystery of um, the husband and where he went. So, uh, you know, and as I say, I've not read anything by Maggie O'Farrell that I've not enjoyed. So some of these are, are writers that I've read a book by and then I've just, to say, looked at their back catalogue and, and picked something else at random that sounds of interest to me. So I look forward to sharing those with you and, and my thoughts. 
the next thing is I have is got I've got four books that I have bought from bookshops. There are a wide range available. Um, the first one is Lessons by Ian McEwan. This is one that you may remember I picked up from the library a while ago, but it's quite a chunky boy, and I I've soon realised that I wasn't going to read it in the time um, that needed to return it, so I've, I picked up my own copy. Um, it says, when the world is still counting the cost of the Second World War and the Iron Curtain has descended, young Roland Bain's life is turned upside down. 2,000 miles from his mother's protective love, stranded at an unusual boarding school, his vulnerability attracts his piano teacher Miriam Cornell, leaving scars as well as memory of love that will never feed. Fade? Feed? Fade? I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on today. The words are not working. Uh, 25 years later, Roland's wife mysteriously vanishes, leaving him alone with their baby son. He's forced to confront the reality of his rootless existence. As the radiation from the Chernobyl disaster spreads across Europe, he begins a search for answers that looks deep into his, the family history and will last for the rest of his life. So it sounds, again, like a really interesting sort of family uh, saga kind of book. Um, I've enjoyed lots of books by Ian McEwan in the past. Um, and uh, including Atonement, Saturday on Chesil Beach. Um, I've got a, a, a quite a few of them. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading that and seeing what I think. Again, it's one that I've heard lots of good things about, but I wanted to take my time. I didn't want to be rushing uh, to read through it and trying to fit it in for, with, the, with the library on that one. Uh, the next one I picked up is a classic horror that I've wanted to read for a while, um, and it's The Exorcist by William Peter Blatty. Do you know, I've never watched the film. I love horror, never even watched the film with this one, um, but I thought possibly the films might be quite dated. I don't I don't know, I've not watched them as I say. So I thought I'll start with the book and see what I think. So you may already be quite aware what the, what the premise is for this. Um, it says, prepare to be afraid. The terror begins quietly, noises in the attic, in the child's room, an odd smell, the displacement of furniture, an icy chill. Easy explanations are offered, then frightening changes are seen in the 11-year-old girl. Medical tests shed no light on her symptoms, but it is as, as if a different personality has invaded her body. A Jesuit priest is called in. Is it possible that a demonic presence is within the child? Exorcism seems to be the only answer, but do they understand the true nature of what they're about to unleash? So uh, it's it's an older book published in 1971 and obviously it's, uh, you know, produced the, the movie of the same name that's incredibly well known for having people collapsing in the theatres. Um, but it's a book that I wanted to read for a while. So I thought I'd have a go and see what I think. I'd say I do love a bit of horror. It might even be one that I save a couple of months to read in uh, autumn, which I think might might suit the mood a little bit better than than sunny July. Uh, then I have Carmella uh, by Sheridan Le Fanu, which is one that, again, look at the cover of that, it's gorgeous. How could I avoid picking that up? Um, it's again, it's one that I've wanted to read for a while. It's um, uh, sold as the cult classic that inspired Dracula. And it was actually a, a novella that was published before Bram Stoker's Dracula came out. And it was serialised serialized even in a, in a magazine and um, published over um, a period of months. And the, the story is about um, a female vampire. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to reading it. Just a quick read. I've actually started this one as well already spoiler alert I don't want to give too much away but look how beautiful that is um, but considering it was written in sort of the 19th century really easy to read um, it was serialized in the magazine the dark blue between 1871 and 1872 um, but really so far really easy to read really easy to read and follow so that's Carmela look at that the beautiful cover um, last of all this was one that um, I was I didn't know anything about I haven't seen anything about but it's called The Wind Knows My Name by Isabel Allende and this is a, a book that I picked up the other day in a high street bookstore um, but there's something about the premise that just really um, drew me in. It says Vienna 1938 Samuel Adler is five years old when his father disappears during Kristallnacht the night his family loses everything. Determined to get her child to safety, Samuel's mother secures a spot for him on the kinder transport train out of Nazi-occupied Austria to England. He boards alone, carrying nothing but a change of clothes and his treasured violin. 
Arizona 2019. Eight decades later, Anita Diaz and her mother board another train, fleeing looming danger in El Salvador and seeking refuge in the United States. But their arrival coincides with the new family separation policy. Torn from her mother and alone at a camp, seven-year-old Anita escapes reality to a magical world of the imagination. So it, it's, it sounds like a really interesting uh, book about refugees and about separation, about family and loss um, and the, the historical premise against the sort of more contemporary um, premise, uh, you know, just sounds really exciting. Not a really fantastically thick book, um, but yeah, there was just, it just really drew me in as soon as I read the premise, um, you know, particularly beginning at Crystal Nacht. Um, so um, yeah, that's the last one. So yeah, more books to add to the pile loads of books too many books too many but at least some of them are library books so they will be going back um but i hope there's something there that that's interested you and it'd be interesting to know what your thoughts are apologies my words were not coming out of my mouth as eloquently as i would like um but i hope you've enjoyed the video and i'll speak to you again soon take care